guys, a bit of an update. I haven't done one for a while. So, um, as you can see, I'm back in Spain at the minute. I'm actually off back to the UK very shortly as well. Um, picked up some good work with a construction company in the UK. Um, it's actually long term. Um, but I've also been constantly inundated with a load of other work. So, I've been reanalyzing things, especially after my father's passing. Because obviously, in the last two years, less than two years, we lost April's father, my father, my mother. Um, and I sit there looking, thinking, you know what? It's time to actually adjust life just to enjoy it a bit more. Um, one of the things I did recent, <laughs> recognize recently is stuff that um, there's a lot of bitterness out there with some people, even though a lot of it is financial orientated or calculated hate in whatever reason um, but I mean I've seen this at the airport I haven't read it yet but I thought that sort of sums it up it's um, basically a lot of people worry about stuff that is completely out of their control um, what do I mean uh, it's like this Brexit thing I'm looking at the Brexit and I'm sitting there going I ain't gonna happen and it's not because I'm sort of disillusioned with it all it's quite simply um, at day one, I mean, Peter will tell you this, I actually said I expected it all to be a complete farce, and it looks like we're heading that way. Um, I do expect that Theresa May will get ousted as a vote of no confidence. It will delay the Brexit. And then there's been talk of this, um, if there's no deal, then there will never be a Brexit. I think that's actually what they're going to do. Um, I have no confidence in the MPs, I'll be honest with you, um, simply because... They're very business as usual, which actually means as long as things ain't changing, they're fine because it does not really affect their lives too much. Um, it affects everybody else's. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's my vote of no confidence in, in that Brexit fiasco. Um, should the UK stay or leave, quite simply, I, I ask people to define what the sovereignty means to them, what their independence means to them. Because even the War of the Royals, uh, sorry, the War of the Roses, did not lead to the end of the monarchy. So I am not 100% what people actually want out of this. Um, the decision-making process, this sort of shows you that <laughs> you can blame Brexit for this, uh, the EU for this, but it's actually the UK politicians uh, playing around because uh, it suits them. Um, so would removing power from the EU be any different? I actually think the, the problem's always been the UK itself and its government end of um, moving on from that. Um, you may have noticed I look a lot thinner in the face and a lot of people have actually mentioned um, I've lost about 18 kilos so far and I'm still, still um, losing weight on a regular basis so I'm quite happy with that. Am I doing anything... Um, amazing and having to oversell the answer is absolutely not uh, one of the things I did um, some time ago was actually I've given up alcohol completely not that I was drinking that regular anyway but uh, the point is what I was finding is like you'd sit like say you'd have a drink on a Friday or something and you think well hang on how many calories are I saying a bottle of wine or a few beers and then you think, well, hang on, over the week I've lost this weight by dieting or whatever. And then you just have that, like um, beer or whatever, um, on a Friday. And then, quite simply, you're putting it back on <laughs> in one session. Um, so I thought, you know what, I'll give up beer. And I did, ages ago. And I started losing weight quite quickly. I also found, you probably remember I did the... The smoothies for a week and I lost five kilos in a week and one of the things I do find is if I lose the weight I don't put it back on um, one of the hard bits is keeping it off but I actually find if you focus on like doing it hard for a week to lose weight I don't seem to gain it um, it comes off um, and one of the things I do regularly although it'd be nice to do 10,000 12,000 15,000 steps a day realistically um, Anywhere between four and ten thousand at the minute is as much as I can get done in a day. Um, even walking up and down on the phone helps. 
but I'm not on the phone that much. I'm actually stuck on spreadsheets at the moment because I'm dealing with um, figures for about 30 contracts. As such, it's a um, complex beast that doesn't leave a lot of time to do anything. I mean, at the moment, even here, I'm doing this recording, you know I haven't done one for a while. I'm having my morning coffee, and then I'll be straight into the spreadsheets. The other good thing about that is um, I've had a bit of time in the UK to travel around a bit, because uh, work's all over the place. When I go back, I'm in London. Um, been up to Manchester already, been to London already, um, but I'm also off in Wales. Um, a lot of travelling around. Got a new Audi, Audi uh, A1, I think it is. Um, they get, I did have a um, Suzuki Vitara. The company gave us a Suzuki Vitara, top of the range one, leather seats, electric windows, electric roof. Um, all singing, all dancing, but I was looking at the tax, and the UK's tax systems got to the point where you're simply going, give us the cheapest car possible, because if I'm going to give it to the state, it ain't coming out of my pocket. And quite simply, the tax deductions on vehicles now is just horrendous. So I went for the cheapest car the company had. Um, it suits me. I'm A to B. I may get something else for the UK later. Um, I'll just wait and see, because quite simply, I've got the Astra in Spain. And we went to Madrid. Ah, oh, should I share some of the photos? I might stick some of the photos on the end of this video. Um, I went to the Madrid, um, passport renewals for April and the kids. So they're now all up to date. Um, we're now looking, the next stage will be citizenship for April and the kids, and they'll become Spanish citizens. Why not British citizens? I'll be honest with you, my confidence in the UK is reducing on a regular basis with stuff they get up to um, so quite simply Spain I'll give a list of a few things I like here firstly cost of living is relative you're not needing 10 times your income to buy an apartment in Spain uh, second one is they still have access to the UK so they can earn incomes in the UK and come back to Spain education systems good in Spain kids are doing well at school they enjoy their school Weather is fantastic in Spain, and on top of that, where we actually live, we have two salt lakes and the sea. Um, we actually have the highest concentration of people over 100 years old in Spain, if not bloody Europe, um, because of the, the eco-climate here. Um, it's very good for people. Um, the weather also means you've got a lot of facilities on your doorstep, and a lot of them are free. You know, you got full football, basketball, uh, cycling facilities, um, yeah, lots of lots of sport activities around that don't cost you a fortune to do them. In the UK, it's a sad thing when everything's been privatised on that side um, because everything becomes an 18-month contract. Instead of thinking, you know what, it'd be nice to take the kids down and go and play football. And then you go to the, in the UK and it's like, yes, are you a member of the club? I don't want to be a member, I just want to play football with the kids. Um, so, I do find Spain has a lot to offer on that side. Downsides, job prospects aren't as good, uh, pay is not as good, but in a global market, does that really matter? The answer is no. Um, the first thing is, a lot of people don't have a big salary, but then if you haven't got a big salary, it means the market adapts to it, which means the cost of living, like properties for example, is cheaper. Um, the other side of that being is obviously when you work, a lot of people seem to have a different lifestyle completely. It's not work, 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 work. Um, it's more a case of go to work, family orientated, have the afternoon off, come back to work in the evening, and basically have a life. Um, so from that point of view, I do like the way Spain is. I do like the way life is. My kids are very happy here. My wife's very happy here. Um, for those that do ask the question, would I move back to the UK with my family? The answer to that is no. Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is I'm very rarely, even in the UK when I'm at home, home in, in the UK, am I actually home? 
um, because I'm normally where the work is. And I, I've been like that since 1997. Um, so the point being is I'm never in one location that long anyway. Um, so the kids in April being in Spain and me hopping backwards and forwards, it's fine. It's one of the things I want to focus on on this channel is the fact of transient working. Um, because quite simply, I do see this as something that is beneficial to a lot of people. One of the big problems in the UK is negative equity around housing. One of the positive things about Spain is it has a lot of housing that they struggle to sell. Um, sorry, did I say negative equity? Yeah, I mean, I say negative equity because I see the market is overvalued. Um, but I do find in Spain... Um, you can get some real deals on the properties, even if you're just renting them, um, where you can actually rent your UK property out and actually make um, somebody else pay your mortgage off and quite simply either give up that house and sell it up or quite simply keep hold of it, rent it out, get somebody else to pay the mortgage off, have a cheaper lifestyle in Spain, commute backwards and forwards, stop at anti jills or whatever. Um, and at the same time, you're getting in a better position to pay off everything quicker, which means you're in a better position to retire, enjoy life, do whatever you want because your mortgage is paid off early or have no mortgage at all and buy or rent in Spain because sometimes it doesn't even pay to buy in Spain. Um, for example, say you estimate you've got 20 years left in you, um, you may actually sit there and go, the tax I'd actually pay on a new house in Spain would actually cover my rent for X amount of years. Do I really want to buy a house in here, then have the deals with the inherited tax when I finally keel over and other people want to deal with all that hassle? No. <laughs> so I can understand when people say, I'll just rent, because quite simply, it's worth doing. In the same way, we want to buy this apartment we're in. It's a nice apartment, fantastic location. And right now, this is one of the things where the UK work is a permanent permanent role, uh, pays okay, and there's a lot of opportunity to develop my skill set, which is the main reason I took it on, along with the, obviously, financially it's good, um, but I'm looking forward to developing the role into something a, a lot bigger um, over time, so that's, that's, that's all good news. Um, am I having any issues in the UK? Um, to be honest, one of the things I would like to do um, is begin renovations on my parents' house. Um, well, now my brother's home, um, but I need to finalise everything first. So I'm sort of we're sort of stuck in limbo um, until that's done. But would it really bother us, bother us if it takes another six months of that? To be honest, no. Life goes on. Um, we have had a few issues around one of our relatives, um, but at the same time. We expected it, um, and I won't go any further than that because, quite simply, it, it does, there's no positive output on that. It's one of the things I, w I wish the the person would do is actually just stand back and sit there and go, "What am I expecting out of this? What it will be the outcome? Is there a positive in this?" Um, because I don't think they do at the minute. My personal opinion, um, but anyway, another thing for another day. So, um, yeah, things are moving along. The other good thing about hopping backwards and forwards, UK, Spain, UK, Spain, is you get to take your tea from the UK to Spain and other bits and pieces that you miss. Um, going to Nando's, for example, in the UK, I enjoyed, because I've been in Nando's for ages. It was just nice to go there, took my brothers there. We had a nice meal there. Um, and at the same time, coming back to Spain, spending time with the kids and stuff, and we prepped up for the Christmas shopping, went down to Iceland overseas, which is obviously Iceland from the UK, but they've now took on Waitrose in there as well, so there's a good mix of stuff in there. Um, and I said to April, well, I'll stock up now, because when I come back on the next run, we did not want to go shopping. This is why you uh, start to see after eights and shortbread and mince pies appear in, in Christmas cards and other bits and pieces. Um... But one of the things I do want to say to people out there, I mean, I, I mean people say bar humbug when I say it, but um, if there's a lot of presents out there that you simply don't need to buy and waste money on. A lot of it is just crap. Um, 
it's environmentally a waste of time. You know, we have these secret centers where everyone pays like five pounds or something for a piece of crap that nobody really wants, and they go, Oh, that's funny, I had that for two minutes. Um, personally, I don't think it's worth people bothering with. Um, I just think it encourages garbage imports, um, and on top of that, a lot of people buy stuff they can't really afford to be doing. I'd much, much rather people spend money on their credit card bills and got to the point where they got the credit card and got rid of it completely, um, rather than waste money on presents that often never get used. Five minute fun. Um, so yeah, nothing wrong with not buying people presents. Nothing wrong with saying to people, don't really need anything. Um, so don't buy me anything because I'm not buying anybody else anything either. <laughs> oh, bah humbug, man, bah humbug. Um, but then again, in Spain, we have the three kings instead of uh, Christmas anyway, so it's a completely different thing in Spain. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, personally, I recommend not bothering with presents unless you really want to. I know some people love Christmas and they look forward to it. Um, but it's also worth saying to people look, I love Christmas, but if you don't get me anything, it's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Don't have to. I just like giving stuff away. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. But I do enjoy Christmas, if I admit. Christmas for me is more about Christmas dinner, having people around, having the social events, um, and giving. I mean, I'm looking at something at the moment for doing a Christmas party in the Philippines. Um, something as a little project. But yeah, for me, it's more about giving. I'm not really bothered. I, in fact, I tell people not to get me anything. <laughs> don't bother me anything. I don't want anything. Um, but I'm looking forward to Christmas. Looking forward to um, spending some time with the family and just enjoying life. One of the things, well, one of the last things, last, last note. Oh. Yeah, the last note is quite simply, um, don't let things get to you. Take a note from this book, just in its title alone. Because um, people I know, some of them get arguing on politics, Brexit, and all that sort of stuff. It's like, you don't control it. it you make zero difference in its uh, outcome. And it's not being defeatist, it's learning to recognize what you can do, what you can't do, and what the outcomes are. Arguing with people over Brexit will not um, make any difference to Brexit, but it'll make differences to your friendships. Arguing with people over stuff <laughs> online has very little positive output. Um, I mean, you, you probably noticed in the last few years I've spent less and less time really getting involved in people's politics, and that's quite simply down to a fact. It has no positive output. Those arguments have been there since, I mean, a lot of the stuff in the Philippines has been there since the 2007, and it was there before I arrived, and some of these internet trolls have been there before then and continue to be there because that is their life. That's what makes them... Well, I can't even say makes them happy, but that's where they spend their time. Um, myself, I'd rather spend my time with my kids. I'd rather spend time with my wife. I'd rather do a bit of traveling. I'd rather not focus so much time and energy into stuff that quite simply has no positive output. Um, and that's the way you analyze things. You know, people aren't really going to do anything with it in the sense that people may get annoyed with Trump, get annoyed with this, get that. Fine, you're entitled to your opinion, but one thing you've got to understand is I'm also entitled to not listen to it. And I no interest in arguing about it, no interest in getting involved in it. I don't go for dinner with Trump. I don't go for dinner with Theresa May. These are people I do not know, and quite simply, why should they affect your friendship with other people? Um, just learn to focus on the stuff that you can control and enjoy, and the rest of it, that's life. Thanks for watching. Have a great Christmas.